Welcome to this web lecture on the vehicle routing problem. And in this web lecture, we're going to introduce timing in the two and the three index formulation of the vehicle routing problem that we've been looking into in two previous web lectures. For this, we're going to continue using the example of Cool TUE. Cool TUE is a service that allows you to pre-order ice cream and then you're getting this ice cream, de cream delivered with one of the cargo bikes in the fleet of Cool TUE. And Cool TOE promises extremely tight delivery time windows to their customers. And the reason behind that is that, of course, you need to be home at the point in time when you get your ice cream delivered. I don't want to place an ice cream at your door and you're going to pick it up uh, five hours later when you're actually home from work. But I would like you to be able to directly put the ice cream into your freezer such that it actually remains cold. So. If we want to formulate that, we're actually just tweaking the formulation of the two index vehicle routing problem. And what we have to do here is we introduce some additional parameters. So we introduce a parameter for travel time, and then we have a beginning of a time window and the end of a time window. We also adapt the constraints. So in the constraints, we additionally add constraints for tracking timing and for the time window restriction which also requires us to add one additional decision variable, which is the time that we're visiting node i. We can use this model formulation to answer multiple additional questions. So first of all, we can ask the question, how many vehicles does this optimal solution use? So if we solve this using Gorobi or any other off-the-shelf solver, how many vehicles do we actually utilize? Secondly, if we look at this mathematical formulation, in particular this one constraint here, we're seeing that we use a big M. Whenever we use a big M, the, que the immediate question is which value of big M makes sense. And then, usually we learn that we always have to restrict the domain of a decision variable. But in this case, we actually don't restrict the decision, uh, the decision space of T. And why is this the case? So let's look into the first question. We don't see an explicit number of vehicles. So we don't have a small k here that tells us that we have at most five vehicles. We also don't have a capital K that tells us that we have a blue vehicle and a red vehicle. But somehow, intrinsically, this formulation restricts the number of vehicles. So let's look into this instance. Here we always have travel times of half a unit of time and service times of half a unit of time. So it always takes us one unit of time to go from one location to the next location and drop something off there. And we have these time windows. So for example, this person, we promised that we're going to be there between point in time one and point in time two. For this person down here, we promised that we're going to be there between six and seven. So this thing here, this instance actually allows us to just directly travel. So we start from the depot, we're up here at one, two, three, four, and so forth. So we can do this with one vehicle. Clearly we can't do it with less than one vehicle because then we can't serve any sort of demand. On the other hand, here the time windows are actually overlapping. All of them have exactly the same time window from one to two. And one to two just doesn't allow us to combine any pair of nodes into one route. So we actually have to always go from the depot to the customer and directly back. So this means that on the one hand side, we have a lower bound of one, but on the other hand, we might have to serve all customers individually, which means that the maximum number of vehicles that we optimally use is the number of nodes. Secondly, we were interested in the value of big M and in particular this big M in here. So let's look into what a good big M is. A good big M does not cut off the optimal solution, but it is also as small as possible. So if we look into this constraint again, what we're seeing that is if our X here is one, then the M is being uh, dropped on both sides and we don't have to care about it. On the other hand, if x equals to zero, then this term here is being dropped and we have ti minus tj is less than or equal to some capital M 
minus the travel time from i to j. Which means that the maximum difference in visiting time between any two nodes is m minus the travel time between those two. So if we know this, and we're now looking into this instance again, then for example, let's just say we're looking into this node up here and this no node down here, then the maximum time, the maximum value of big M that we somehow still have to cover is the end of the time window of one node minus the beginning of the time window of the other node and the travel time, plus the travel time between those two. And then our big M is the maximum value over all i and j that satisfies this. The question now, of course, is what if we did not have any time windows? Is there also a possibility for us to reasonably set this big M? And this is what I would like you to look into. The last question that we had is why we don't have a restriction on ti. And actually that is fairly simple because we do have a restriction, we just don't call it a domain restriction variable. And that is this constraint. If you look at this, so we know that ti is real valued. We also know that it has lower and upper bounds. So usually we're of course saying that ti is greater or equal to zero. But in this case, this ai already gives us a lower bound. So we don't have to explicitly treat this here. So what I would like you to take away from this web lecture is first of all how, what timing is and how we integrate timing in vehicle routing. Secondly, I would like you to take away how you can answer questions about mathematical models. And what I would like you to look into is the big M without any time windows. Thanks.